Dear students, in the last module we studied about the various types of physical evidences. In this module, you shall be able to know about various types of evidences, trace evidence in detail, the different types of trace evidences. First, we'll start with the definition of types of evidences. Broadly, evidence can be divided into three. Testimonial evidence, physical evidence and trace evidence. Let us understand these evidences in detail. First, testimonial evidence. These are the evidences in oral or written statements often given by the people who witnessed an event or a crime. This evidence is often given to police as well as court testimony. Second is physical evidence. These are the evidences which are any material items that would be present at the crime scene on the victims or found in a suspect's possession. Third is trace evidence. These are the physical evidences which are found in small but measurable amounts. Few examples of trace evidences are strands of hair, fibers or skin cells. Now an introduction to trace evidences. The trace evidence can be obtained on the culprit, victim, crime scene, weapon, vehicle, etc. The culprit and victim may carry traces on his clothes, on his shoes, in his hair, underneath his nails, in his sexual body part, etc. in case of sexual offenses. The victim may also carry powder residues in case of shooting. In case of killing by poison, the needle marks or poison traces at the administration point may also be found. Most of the trace evidence is encountered at the crime scene, such as saliva or cigarette stud on cups, glasses, dust, body fluids, fibers, etc. Trace evidence such as blood, skin and flesh may be found sticking to the weapon that is firearm in suicide or close contact murders. Locating trace evidence is usually a tedious task due to the small quantity of evidence encountered. Due to minute nature of evidence, the collection of trace evidence needs more precautions compared to other types of evidence. Besides trained eye and brain, the help of magnifying glass, strong light and UV lamp can also be taken. Collection. Taping, vacuuming, hand picking, scrapping are few techniques for collection of trace evidences. Packaging. Packaging of evidence needs care in order to prevent loss or contamination. The different packaging material is required for individual trace evidences. Now the types of trace evidences. Hair, fiber, soil, paint, gunshot residue, glass, tool marks, etc. Other important trace evidences are tire marks, bite marks, drug, injuries like lacerations, contusions, etc. Fingernail scrappings, fracture marks or insects, etc. Now let us discuss few important trace evidences in detail. First is hair. Hair on brush often encountered at the crime scene. Forensic investigation of hair can tell investigator whether the hair belongs to human or animal. If the source of origin of hair is human, then the specific part of the body from where the sample has originated can also be find out. The hair evidence is usually tested to determine not only the color, shape and chemical composition of the hair, but also the race of the source individual. The presence of dyes, hair treatment, toxins is noted. The gathered information assists investigating officer in inclusion or exclusion of particular individuals. If the hair has a follicle, that is the root, attached, then the DNA testing may be used to identify an individual. Now how the collection is done? The collected hair evidences are sent to the laboratory along with the control samples from a suspected individual. While collecting control samples, make sure the hair from all parts of the head are obtained. 
for pubic hair the area should be combed for foreign hairs prior to sample collection. Hair samples are primarily collected using tweezers. Next evidence is fiber. Fiber is a natural or synthetic string which is used as a component of composite material. They are usually knotted into sheets to make products such as paper, papyrus or felt. Other materials are also manufactured from fibers. Fiber evidence is useful in crime scene investigation because their origin can be identified. However, fibers are very mobile and can become airborne, get brushed off or fall from clothing. Fiber evidence can tell a lot about crime if processed correctly. A carpet fiber on a person's shoe can indicate the individual's presence at a crime scene. Fiber evidence is usually found in fabric aberrations or caught in torn materials or other areas on hit and run vehicles, caught in torn screens, broken glass or other locations in some burglary cases. To determine whether fibers and threads belong to the same source or not, the same obtained from the body of suspect's clothing can also be compared. Each collected article of clothing or each individual or other object may be packed separately. Set each garment on a clean paper sheet and roll separately in the paper. Do not forget to mark each exhibit. The comparison may have no value if the clothing of one subject touches the clothing of another. Thread or large fibers are often picked up with the fingers and placed in a paper bindle and then in a coin envelope which can be sealed and marked. Loose fibers should not be placed directly into a mailing envelope since they can be lost from this type of envelope. Examination of fibers is usually done to find out the color or type of fiber. Such kind of examinations will sometimes indicate the type of garment or fabric from which they originated. It may help an investigating officer in proceedings. If the fibers are short or few in number and if it is possible to do so, wrap the area or the entire item containing the fibers in paper. The whole exhibits are then sent to the laboratory. When fibers or threads are recovered, always send all clothing of persons from which they might have originated to the laboratory for comparison purposes. Fibers are proven very much helpful in cases of sexual offenses, assaults, etc. In such cases, it may be possible to indicate or demonstrate contact between two individuals or between one another or one other individual and some other object such as a car seat by comparing fibers. Such examination are only of value when it is known no contact occurred between the two individuals or an individual and some other object prior to or subsequent to the offense. Now third type of trace evidence is soil. Soil is a composite mixture of material. The soil can be characterized with the help of composition of minerals, the size and shape of grains. The soil or dried mud is usually collected from the suspect's clothing or shoes or an automobile may link a suspect or object to the crime scene when compared to the soil there. The questioned soil can be analyzed even without the crime scene and helps in finding the place where the crime was committed. The chemical and physical properties of soil are usually looked for. The fourth type of trace evidence is paint. Paint is of high value evidence due to availability of painted surfaces in wide range and variety of layered colors, lustre and types. Paint evidence is usually transferred when one vehicle hits another vehicle. A pedestrian or a building can be matched to potentially identify the car in question. In a crime related to property where a tool is used to break into a building, a paint transferred to or from the tool can connect the tool to the location. Analyzing automotive paint can identify the make, model and sometimes the year of a vehicle was made. Collection. To collect paint, investigators document the scene, 
then peel off or excise small amounts of paint from the soles. Next type of trace evidence is gunshot residue, also known as GSR. Gunshot residue or GSR is residue deposited on the hands and clothes of shooter. GSR is basically composed of burnt and unburnt particles from the explosive primer, the propellant and possibly fragments of the bullet, cartridge case and the firearm. The clothing and skin of people is usually tested for GSR to determine if they were near a gun when it discharged or not. An approximate distance of 3 to 5 feet can be travelled by GSR. Only few trace particles may be present at the farthest distance. Next type of trace evidence is glass. Glass is an amorphous or non-crystalline solid material which is often transparent. Glass has an extensive practical, technological and decorative usage in these things like tableware, window panes, etc. Traces of glass can often become a source of forensic evidence. Windows are frequently broken in burglaries. Headlights in hit and run cases and bottles or other objects may break or leave fragments on personal belongings of suspects involved in various types of crimes. Glass is encountered as evidence in various forms such as vehicle windows, architectural windows, containers, headlamps and mirror glass. The examiners compare samples of glass found on suspects or found at the scene of a crime with the suspected source of known origin. The physical and optical properties of color, thickness, density and refractive index are measured in case of glass. Glass examinations may reveal whether question or control sample belongs to the same source or not. The type of glass can also find out whether tempered glass, container glass, etc. The direction of force used to break a window whether from inside or outside, the order of shots fired into a window or windshield. Recovery of evidence samples, wrap, shoes or clothing or other objects contaminated with glass in paper before submitted to the laboratory for examination. All glasses found at hit and run scenes should be recovered. As there is possibility that all glass found at hit and run scenes should be recovered, the search for glass samples should not be restricted to the point of impact. Headlight glass may be dropped off at some distance away as the car leaves the crime scene. Use different containers to collect glass from different locations. All glass evidences found at the crime scene should be collected because more than one type may be present. In addition, if just a few representative samples are saved, individual pieces that could be physically matched with glass remaining in the headlight shell of the suspected vehicle may be overlooked. The glass pieces collected from different locations must be packaged into different containers. Mark clearly the outside packaging as to the location and description of the evidence. Label large glass pieces with orienting marks, example up, down, inside or outside when applicable. A rigid container must be used to collect and package a large glass piece. The broken or fractured edges of the glass must be protected from any additional damage or rupture. Depending on the size, glass pieces can be packaged in envelopes, bags or in paper folds. Place the small glass particles onto the adhesive of a post-it note and use a pen to circle around it. Glass pieces that are a little bigger can be packaged in envelopes or bags and then secured in padded envelope to protect from further breakage or injury to those handling the evidence. Fold the note in half covering the glass particles. 
and then put the folded post-it note in a paper envelope. Small particles of glass may be found on the clothing, sole, tops of shoes and cuffs or lower portion of pants of an individual who breaks a window forcefully. In order to prevent dislodging of small glass particles, collect clothing items with small glass particles with caution not to shake or handle the clothing more than necessary. If the clothing is stained with biological material, allow the clothing to air dry on a clean, dry surface and package in a paper bag. Package unstained clothing in a plastic bag carefully, sealing all possible openings. The suspect's hair can be combed over white paper to recover any glass particles that may be present. Fold the paper so that it prevents loss of the glass particles and package in a paper envelope or bag. Standards for comparison. Windows. Send the whole window if the broken window is small or all glass remaining to the laboratory. If the window is large, recover several samples from different areas of the window. If the evidence glass is large, enough for physically matching the broken edges or comparing the fracture lines, hackle marks, surface abrasions or contamination, the whole broken window is necessary. Auto glass or auto headlights, all glass remaining in the shell should be recovered. If it is suspected that a new glass has been installed, this should be removed and a careful examination made for small chips remaining in the shell from the previous lens which is broken. In such cases, also submit the new lens to the laboratory. Collection and packaging of glass standards. A comparison of evidence glass to a possible source requires the submission of glass standards. If possible, submit the entire item in packaging that reduces the chance for further breakage. Large windows may require a sampling of glass from several different spots as there may be variation of physical properties even within a single glass pane. Vehicle windshields and some structural glass may be double paned, meaning that two different panes of glass are present. Standards must be collected from different areas of both glass panes. Package the standards from each pane separately. For window glass standards, collect the glass that is still adhering to the window. Frame when possible. Collecting glass standards from the ground increases the likelihood of introducing contaminant glass into the standard. Next type of trace evidence is tool marks. A criminal often uses tools to commit a crime, usually to open a window, lock, etc. A criminal can be linked to a crime through the tool and tool marks collected from the scene even after a long interval of time. No tools even of the same make and batch made one after the other will have identical surface and leave identical marks on the surface cut, grazed or scratched by them. Tool marks are of various types such as indentations caused by hammer, dies, punches, metallic seal and stamp, stones etc. Scraps caused by cutting tools, chisels, can openers, crowbars, screwdrivers, pliers, shovels, wrenches, etc. Saw marks, drilled holes, prints, contact marks, broken and screwed parts. Collection. The original articles which bear question tool marks are collected. Before removal, the article must be documented. When it is not possible to collect the tool mark, then cast of plasticine, dental mask, adhesive tape, latex and plastic solution, woods, metal, plaster of Paris are used to collect the marks. Packaging. Package the article in cellophane envelope. Close the open ends and pack the envelope with cotton wool or clean dry rag padding in a suitable container. Standard. Standard tool marks are prepared by the examiners preferably using similar material in which the tool marks are found at the site.
we will conclude this module with the summary. Evidence can be classified into testimonial evidence, physical evidence and trace evidence. The trace evidence can be found on the culprit, victim, crime scene, weapon, vehicle, etc. Taping, vacuuming, hand picking, scrapping are few techniques for collection of trace evidences. Various types of trace evidences encountered at the crime scene such as hair, fiber, soil, paint, gunshot residue, glass, tool marks, tire marks, bite marks, drug, injuries, fingernail scrappings, fracture marks and insects. Examination of hair can help in finding source of origin whether the hair is of human or animal. The DNA testing of hair can also be done to identify an individual in case the hair has a follicle attached to it. Hair samples are primarily collected using tweezers. Fiber is a natural or synthetic string which is used as a component of composite materials. Fiber evidence is usually found in fabric aberrations or caught in torn materials or other areas on hit and run vehicles caught in torn screens, broken glass or other locations in some burglary cases. Comparison of fibers and threads with suspect clothing can help in determining whether or not both belong to same source. Examination of fibers is usually done to determine the type or color of fiber. Soil is a complex mixture of material that is vegetation, flora and fauna. Paint evidence is usually transferred when one vehicle hits another vehicle. In a property crime where a tool is used to break into a building, paint transferred to or from the tool can connect the tool to the location. Gunshot residue or GSR is residue deposited on the hands and clothes of shooter. The clothing and skin of people is usually tested for GSR to determine whether they were near a gun when it discharged or not. Glass is an amorphous or non-crystalline solid material. The examination of glass can also reveal if it has been obtained from the same source or not, the number of rounds fired, type and make of the glass and the direction of force used to break a window. The packaging of glass as evidence can be done in paper bags and envelopes based on the sizes of the glass pieces. In case the clothes found in the scene of crime are not stained with any biological material, for example blood, then it should be packed in plastic bag, otherwise the clothing should be air dried and packaged in paper bag. Two tools of the same batch and same model will never leave marks that are identical to each other. Tool marks are of various types such as indentations, scraps and saw marks, drilled holes and prints, contact marks, broken and screwed parts. The original articles which bear question tool marks are collected. When it is not possible to collect the tool mark then casts of plasticine, dental mask, adhesive tape, latex and plastic solutions woods metal and plaster of Paris are used to collect the marks. Standard tool marks are prepared by the examiners preferably using similar material in which the tool marks are found at the site. Thank you.